Hello, hello, welcome to Quackalope, and today I'm here with Arsenio, who you've seen before for Pokemon, but instead we're covering a social deduction game and kind of a convention game with two rooms and a boom by Alan Girding and Sean McCoy, and this is published by Tuesday Night Games. Tuesday Night. And I do want to say thank you real quick to Tuesday Night Games. I was at Origins. I played Ooh. this for the very first time, and they were kind enough to send me home with a copy of the game so that I could produce this uh, how to play video. Uh, Arsenio is here because you go out of your way to host yes, two do. rooms and a boom at a few different conventions every year. Like this is your game, right? This is my game. Tell it, tell tell the audience why they should watch the rest of this video. I was super excited when you said you wanted to do a video on this game. This is one where at any convention I go to, uh, any game night I go to that has a lot of people, it's gonna be in my bag. It's something I can reach for, quickly grab a few people into it. It's quick, it's fast, um, and it's just a blast to play with all the different characters you can get into, which we might talk a little bit about later on, but it's just a fun game. And this game, as far as like size and scale, this is kind of a convention game, right? It, it yes. challenges Werewolf, which is another standard, mm -hmm. uh, as as being a game that, you know, you can sometimes, like every now and then, I can get 15 people together or 20 people together. But this is a game that can extend up to like 20, 30. You said you even played around where there, you had 50 people 50 playing? 50 people, 50 plus people yeah. uh, at a convention. And so while you can play this game, the box has, the box says six through 30. Yep. Uh, and there is a variant, which if you stay to the very end of this video, you'll discover this game shines the more people you can put in a room. Yes, it okay. certainly does. The more people you can put in a room, the more crazier stuff you can add to it. But the base game itself is super fun to get into, which we're going to talk about. Okay. Soon. Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to give you a quick uh, how to play video. We're going to dive through some of our favorite cards, and then we're going to be doing a separate video around how you might go about hosting this yeah. game yourself. If, if you're just joining in, or you want to try to get get a group together, a social deduction group or something like that, we'll talk about how uh, the easiest way to go about hosting a social deduction <laughs> night with the theme being two rooms and a boom. Uh, so let's go ahead and dive into to how one would play this game. Sure, that's easy place to start. Get everything out of that box. Go ahead, find out how many people are playing, lay it all out, and then find those base cards. You're gonna find the blue team cards, then you're gonna find the red team cards. Then you want to look for these two cards here, the President and the Bomber. These guys are the most important cards in the game because this will determine who wins or lose. One person is going to end up with the President, another person is going to end up with the Bomber. President wants to end up in a different room from the Bomber at the end of the game. However, if the Bomber can be in the same room with the President at the end of the game, boom. They win, red team wins, blue team loses. You might have picked up on something. I said two different rooms. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a game where you need uh, a fair bit of people, but more importantly, if you can do it in a large space or two separate rooms, please do. That's what this game needs and that's what it's about. You need to be in a room or a setting somewhere where you can't hear the other team when they get separated. The title of the game is, is very on the nose. Oh yes. It sounds abstract, but it's, it's literally two rooms, or two controlled spaces, yep. and a boom. And a boom. Which is the end of the game. <laughs> uh, and so one reason the format of this game tends to be a convention hall is you usually have a lot of people, but also the space necessary to kind of facilitate the gameplay. Yes. Um, whenever I get a chance to bust it out and just have that space to play, it's really nice to be able to, at the very least, even if you have just an open area, not be able to know clearly what the other team is mm -hmm. saying. Sure. So how how is the base game played? What's the what's the Ooh. setup and what's the what's the core mechanic of the base game? So core mechanic of the base game, just like I mentioned earlier, you got these two characters. You're gonna take out all of the blue team member cards that are just basic blue team. They'll say blue team on the side and blue team on the bottom. Nothing else but that. Same thing for the red team. You're gonna do the same thing. And all these other cards you're seeing us flip through here, these are expansions and characters, just like any other social deduction mm, game, yes. this game is packed full of ways that you can change up, manipulate the storyline, add in other win conditions. We will cover some of our favorites, mm -hmm. uh, but we're not we're not gonna too heavily focus on every single element of this game because there's just a lot to cover. There's a lot to cover. Yeah. A lot of cool things you can add to it, but just to begin with, you're gonna find these generic blue and red team cards. 
then you want to go ahead and find the team spy for each and every team. There's going to be one blue card that basically says you are the spy for the red team. There's going to be a red card that says you are the spy for the blue team. Are those always included in the base game? They are always included in the base okay. game. So once you have these cards here, you're pretty much ready to go and set up for your base game. Now, if you're playing with an odd number of people, you want to go ahead and throw in the gambler. And the gambler is a gray team card, which means they have their own separate win condition that's different from both red, red and blue. And the reason we're mentioning the gambler right now is because the gambler will always be included if you're playing with an odd number of people. Yes. Okay. Very important. Now, once you know how many people are playing, if there's an odd number or not, you're going to go ahead and always include these two cards and the spies and any number of generic blue and red equal on both sides for the amount of people you're playing with, shuffle them all up, and then go ahead and randomly separate all the people playing your group in those two spaces, and then hand them out their cards. So if you have 10 people playing the game, yep. you'd have five people in each room, uh, you'd shuffle these up blindly, yep. and you'd hand out five, like one hidden card to each member of each room. Perfect, okay. that's exactly what you would do. Uh, once you have that set up, then you want to go ahead and hand someone a leader card and then have someone keep time because this is very important. This game is played over three rounds, okay? Three rounds where you will be talking about who you are, whatever you want to get information out of other people to find who you need to find in case like if you're the blue team, you need to find the president and keep him safe. Whereas in case of the red team, you need to find the bomber while also figuring out who, they're, who the blue team is protecting to get the bomber next to and break. Very colorly way. How is the initial leader determined? Ah, the leader is chosen simple. Very, very simple. You go to your side, we start the round off. If we need to pick out a leader, whoever is appointed the leader by simply you just pointing at someone, I would like to nominate Jesse. Boom. He's now the leader. And that's the starting. That's the starting. And then from that point on, the leader can change in two ways. Oh, yes. Either by a raised hand and a point, indicating that you want a vote to happen. Majority rules, if majority votes, yep. that becomes they become the new leader. That's usurping the leader. Ooh. Or the leader can pass off their card to a willing participant. Yep. But an important rule there, I can then ah. not, in that same round, pass back the leader card because they can't have it anymore. Nope. They gave up power. No more. Yeah. Yep. Once you have that all done and said, playing the game is really, really straightforward from there. It's just a matter of how much can you talk uh, and get information out of players. Now, these cards here that you'll be holding on to, these cards you may do whatever you want with them, but when you're playing with uh, uh, less than six players or six players or less, um, you you have the option to share your card with people. And you must share your entire card if you decide to share your card with someone. So if I go over to Jesse and go, hey, you know, you know, would you like the card share? And if you offer, mm -hmm. you have to be willing to do it. Exactly. Okay. And because you offered, I'll say, sure, I'll, I'll card share with you. And we'll fully share oh. our cards. Oh, what? what? Yeah, that's the wrong team. Hey! It's the wrong team. He's on my team. So that's, so that's for, I believe, 10 and under, like the full share mechanic. Yep. If you're playing with, if you're playing with 10 and over, like this game's, I think, normally played probably with, with higher and higher amounts Lots. of people, there's different mechanics for sharing your card. You can give more or less information. Mm-hmm. The way that works is now you have the option of keeping your card secret, hidden, things like that, going to someone, asking if they would like the card share and show the full card. But now I could do something like color share, where I would go to a person, would you like the color share? And I'd just show them what team faction I'm on, which is at the bottom of the card. Never show the side of the card where the information about what your, your card character is and about which team you're on is completely all there. And now this is a good example of why that's important. Mm -hmm. I'm the blue spy. Yes. If I show you just the red team, you're not sure exactly where I stand. So I then, talk. so I might show it and I might say, well, I'd, I'd like to card share with you, mm, you know? Sure. And then we'll show you the whole thing. We'll, we'll realize yeah. we're on the same team, but everyone else, all the other blue members or all the other red members, I'd just be showing them that that exactly. sliver of card. So the game the game breaks down into this really interesting mesh of how much information do you give away? Yep. How much information do you receive? Mm -hmm. And then there's, th like you said, there's three or potentially five rounds to this game. Each one of those rounds are going to be timed. 
Uh, the top of this leader card here will show how many how many minutes each round yep. goes. For a three for a three round game, the first round is going to be three minutes, then two minutes, then one minute. So pretty mm. tight, a pretty tight game. Yeah, that of course can be manipulated, but that's kind of the core base base rules. I know we're going to get into this in the next video, but this is another thing that I like about this game mm. is that it's depending on if you're playing three or five rounds of it, the timer keeps this game short for mm. a lot of people, which keeps them interested, keeps them going, keeps the game moving, keeps it well paced. I love that. So right from so so right from the start, I'm gonna have three minutes. That first round, mm -hmm. we have divided up into groups. Yep. We've each been given a hidden card, mm -hmm. and we've started doing things. Either would you like to card share, yeah. which would be the whole thing, mm -hmm. or would you like to color share, mm -hmm. which would just be a sliver, yes. right? And that's what we've been doing for three minutes. Yes. We've also very quickly designated a single leader. Mm -hmm. We might have seen that leader card change places oh. if there had been a vote oh. to swap that leader card. At the end of that first round, oh, yes. we're going to either have the game controller or one of the moderators call out for hostages. Yes. That's another core mechanic of this game. Very important core mechanic yeah. of the game. Because remember how I said, the goal of the game for if you're the blue team is to stay have the president stay out of the room with the red bomber. However, the bomber wants to be in the same room. So how does that happen? Well, when the timer is called, whoever is that room's leader the hostage negotiator will pick one or more hostages, depending on how many people are playing and what round you're in, mm -hmm. and send them over to the other side. But before that happens, they call a time, they both leaders meet in the middle, they try not to give away any information about what's going on in the other room, and they call for their hostages when they're ready to be swapped. Mm -hmm. Once the swapping happens, no talking across rooms, no going back, no, no changing your mind. Even if you're the leader, you cannot change your mind once you've chosen hostages. They must go to the other side. Then once that's done, everyone gets settled in again, and we start the next timer for the next round. An important thing to note on that, that hostage situation. Oh, yes. Uh, you have to make sure your hostages don't come with you yes. when the leader is initially called. The reason for that is you don't want the other side to have any additional information on who you're sending over. So the moderator of this game, if someone's moderating this game, yep. or if you're just playing in it as the leader, make sure that you designate your hostages, yes. then go meet in the middle to say, I've designated my hostages, and then call out for them to cross spaces or to go ahead and cross rooms. You don't want to reveal who you're sending before the other team reveals who they're sending. Yes. Especially in the last few rounds of this game, that becomes really important. Oh well, yes, very important to do. And once that's all said and done, if you've gone through about three rounds or so, um, then we get to a fun situation. At the end of the third round, the hostage will tra uh, change rooms, and then the fun part happens. Now, either with someone moderating the game or with the two leaders, you'll go ahead and you'll do some announcements here. You simply go ahead and call out, can the president raise their hand? Oh, I'm the bomber. Ah. <laughs> Then go ahead and call and see who's the bomber and have them raise their hand. This is usually where it gets really funny and fun uh, because everyone's like, what, what, who's what? No, or it's a really cool reveal. Um, that part of the game feels very nice when that happens, trying to figure out who was where and what happened what, and that team winning or losing based on that. And that's where, that's where the, the win-loss, the victory element of the game comes in. An important note, if you are playing with the gambler, the Ooh, gambler yes. card goes Right here. over here. If you are playing with the gambler, the gambler is actually going to have a say before any of those names are, are called out. Oh, yes. The gambler is going to, his core game mechanic, mm -hmm. is to get as much information as possible so that at the end of the game, he can determine who the winner is going to be. He'll say, I think red team's gonna win, or I think blue team's gonna win. Ooh. He doesn't care if the president explodes, doesn't care if the bomber explodes in a room without the president. His win condition is solely based on his ability to determine Ooh. the winner. That's a pretty good card. And that's a, cool, that's a cool mechanic to have in the game because the blue and red team will both be giving and receiving information from him. So he can kind of be a balance point. Another important note with the gambler, if you're playing with a mix of gray yes. cards, a mix of other reds and blues, there's so much variation in this that they went through and they labeled, uh, they gave each reveal card, each each uh, alternative win condition card, a specific number based on where it should be called out. When you get to the point where you're revealing if the president and the bomber are in the same or separate rooms, yep. 
if you're playing with alternatives, make sure you know who's supposed to reveal their information first. Whether it's Moby Dick and Ahab uh, being in separate rooms with Ahab being the one that gets exploded. Romeo and Juliet. Who want to be in the same room and want to get exploded. Oh, yeah. Whether it's the sniper, decoy, and target uh, revealing if they successfully shot or who they successfully shot. There's a lot of alternative win conditions for specific people in this game. And each one of those has a reveal order so that you don't give other people more information based on their gameplay. Yes. Uh, so that's something that's important to pay attention to. Like I said, we will not be able to dive into every single one of these cards. If you have a specific question, you're welcome to leave a comment in the comment section down below. But these rule books do a really good job Super good. at laying out, very quickly laying out and letting you know not only how the game's played, but also what each one of these specific conditions do. Do you have any other things around the gameplay you wanted to touch on before I dive into this character guide? When teaching the game, just before, in fact, I'm glad you're going to pick up the character guide. When teaching the game, make sure before you even start anything, everyone knows what characters are in that game mm. and what they do and their win conditions. It's very important to do this before you start, especially with a multiplayer game like this with all those, all those many people in two different rooms. Um, it's very important that they know what's going on and what's happening. Uh, so that way when playing, time doesn't need to be interrupted for clarifications. The convention hall where I was playing had a lot of new players joining Ooh. in. They had actual whiteboards oh. where they wrote up every single member or every single alternative that was being added to the game. That allowed us to just, with a glance, check to see if, you know, who are the people that may be here? Is there someone operating as the spy that may or may not be my friend? Mm -hmm. Is the shy guy in this game? The shy guy can only reveal the color portion of their card. That's true. So that means if someone's being really sneaky and it seems like they won't show you their whole card, they might not be able to show you their whole card. It True. could actually be their rule. Uh, so that allowed us in both rooms and both spaces to glance up really quickly and know what the dynamics we were playing with might be. And the final note, we might have mentioned it once or twice, but if you have an extra person who's okay and willing to be the moderator for the game, it does help. Um, having someone be able yeah. to keep the game pace moving right along, making sure everyone's following the rules, or just in case somebody forgets something, which can happen with that many players. Well, and there's two key points where that where that really comes into play. Uh, the moderator is usually going to be the person picking the, the alternative characters in the deck, uh, which with how many options there are, having someone that's an expert on this game that can go through and, and pick out what, because some roles just really can't be played with other roles. It swings, it swings the balance of the game too much. This character guide does a really good job at laying that out, and we'll touch that in, on that in just a second but the moderator will help with, with character selection. The moderator will also help with two key moments of the game, mm. the time management Ooh. and the hostage call. You know, if, if you have both rooms trying to watch time on their own, it can be a little bit flexible, it can be pushed a little bit, it can yeah. be weird when you're trying to yell back and forth to like send hostages. Mm -hmm. If you have someone that can be there in the center, call both leader, leaders forward, check to see if they have hostages selected, and then call all the hostages to cross room. It just cleans up that middle yeah. section of the game. Yeah, I, I will speak to that note. Mm -hmm. Just really quick note there. Without the moderator, I have seen players will try to keep talking before they get mm -hmm. moved over. But the moderator, like you said, cleans it up. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the character guide. This mm -hmm. is something that I wanted to touch on. The rule book is, is really short and tight uh, and does a really good job at, at kind of laying out everything we've it's just covered. It's a good rule book. So if you want to refresh, or you didn't want to watch a 15 minute video, which is why you're here anyway. If you, so if you want to refresh, uh, touching into that rule book isn't challenging or, or daunting at all. I highly recommend giving it a quick read before you moderate or host the game. Oh yes. That being said, the character guide is where I think the rule book or the, or the layout of this starts to shine. Mm -hmm. This book is full of breakdowns of every single character or potential character in this game. Yes. Not only that, it does a really, really nice job of telling you what the positives and negatives of each role might be mm -hmm. in terms of a gameplay environment, tells you very specifically and clearly how that character interacts in the game, and then on top of that, up here at the top, it shows you if they're tied to someone, yep. like Romeo and Juliet have to be included in the game together. It shows you if there's a blue and a red variant of that character. So you know that if you're introducing the engineer, the blue alternative to that will be oh. introducing the doctor. And then on top of that, it does a really good job at letting you know what interesting mixes might be and what what negative or kind of impossible mixes might be. Sure. Uh, there are some cards in here that, like we said earlier, swing the balance of this game in one direction or another. 
this rule book lets you know what other cards you can introduce to swing that balance back so it's at a appropriate level. Because uh, the worst part of a social deduction game is feeling like you weren't in control of the end result. Ooh, that is the worst part. I mean, for me. Yeah. Right? Oh, for me included. Okay. Okay. <laughs> uh, the last thing I wanted to touch on, real quick. Yeah. Let's let's talk about some of our favorite characters or experiences. Feel free to just like flip through your deck and toss a card or two out. Uh, um, he already has some of my two favorite ones already up here, and that is the hot potato and the leprechaun. Okay. Now, with the hot potato, whenever you color share with this card, you actually swap this card with another player. So if we were if we were hidden here, then you want a card share? You want to share a card share? Card share. You can go ahead and share that card with me. Oh, come yeah, on. Go ahead. Seriously? Yeah. Now, holding this card at the end of the game is going to cause you to lose the game. Yeah. So, just like any hot potato, you want to pass it on to someone. Mm -hmm. But be careful when you get that card. You want you might want to sort of be cool about it. The negative side with this is if you're playing with some other wackier um, character combinations, you might want to not play with the hot potato. Mm -hmm. But the thing I like playing with alongside it or by itself sometimes is the leprechaun. Mm -hmm. Leprechaun is completely the opposite of the hot potato. If you're holding this, you're going to win the game regardless of who wins red or blue. Same mechanic. So all you'll see on different sides are people swapping cards. Yep. You know there's a hot potato and a leprechaun card floating around. If you hold the leprechaun oh, card yes. at the end of the at the end of the game, you win. Yep. That's a good gamble. If you hold the hot potato card at the end of the game, <laughs> you lose. That's why I love playing with both of them at the same time. Get a card? Another one of my favorite cards is going to be the drunk. Uh, I like the drunk because I've played as the drunk. Ooh. That was like the second time I ever played. What this does, well, it does kind of exactly what the title says. If you have the drunk card, you have no idea what role you are until the third round of the game. Ooh. So you start off with this beautiful purple card. You could be on either team. You could be any role. You could be a gray character. All you know is that a card was removed from your deck. The drunk card was introduced and you don't get to see this card until the third round. Wow. I just think that's kind of, it's, it's, it's weird. That's awesome. It allows you to play an interesting role because at the very start of the game, everyone <laughs> everyone thinks you might be their friend. Oh. They're not sure. You could be the president. You could be, you could be Ahab. You could be just another generic team member. You don't know. What? Yeah. That's a good card. I like that one a lot. Um, another one for me, if I can find them really quickly, one I usually add in right after uh, a group's first game mm -hmm. because it adds a little bit more of what's going on is I usually like to add Romeo and Juliet. These two cards right here. Okay. Um, what they do is simple, very simple. Just like any good tragic love story, mm -hmm. they want to end up in the same room at the end of the game, finding each other and end up in the same room with the bomber. Mm -hmm. So that means you have to go around asking to share cards, color share, and just find your true love. And once it, once you do, how do you end up in the same room? I usually like to throw one other wrench in there with them because with them, if they're the only two gray cards, once they see each other, they're like, hey, I found you. Yeah. So usually I like to add something in there, especially if there's like an odd number and the gamma's already in it, it's a great time to bring out Romeo and Juliet. Yeah. Fun stuff like that. And then the other interesting thing with any of these gray cards, mm -hmm. but like for instance with Romeo and Juliet, if I find Romeo and I know Juliet's on the other side of the room and I'm on the blue team, yes. I can tell Romeo, hey, I'll give you Juliet if you just find me the bomber. Because they want to find the bomber anyway. Yeah. They don't care. Like, they could care less who won or lost. You got someone to keep safe. They've got their own win condition. <laughs> uh, a card that I wanted to point out is Cupid. Ooh. Cupid. And there's another one in there, I believe the demon or the devil. Yep. Cupid can make two people fall in love. With, which changes the balance of the game and nice. changes the win condition for whoever they make fall in love. So, the place where it gets really interesting. Yeah. If Cupid's able to find the president and the bomber, this is the funnest way to play Cupid. Ooh, yes. If it can find the president and the bomber, show its Cupid card to both of those people mm. and say, you two are now in love, in order for the president and the bomber to win... They have to be in the same room together, which sways the balance in favor of the team that the Cupid's on. Yes. But there's a blue Cupid as well. Yep. So they can both be hunting for that kind of like end game trump card. <laughs> That's a good one. Or there's a blue demon. So if you have a if you have a blue demon and a red Cupid in the game, Cupid tries to pair them together and the demon tries to separate them. The yep. demon can look at them as well and say, hey, you two now have the hate condition. You refuse to be in the same room together. 
Yes. So that's it, just a good mix. There's a lot of cool dynamics that you can so get in all the cards. So many weird dynamics. And so many alternative win conditions. That's one mm -hmm. thing that I love. It's not... There's not dynamics that are just changing up how you interact with each other. There's entire dynamics that, that change up like the foundation of the game for certain members. Yes. It makes it so that the game you're playing is just kind of part of the game I'm playing. Yes. You just flipped through and revealed a card that is another one that I've played with that I kind of wanted to, to highlight. It's called the Bouncer. The Bouncer is going to have a red and blue team variant, but what the Bouncer does is anytime you have an odd number, so anytime you're including the Gambler, yeah. maybe toss in a red and a blue team Bouncer. The reason for that is the Bouncer on any of the teams that have more members than the oh. other team, up until round three, can point at the extra at an extra person in a room and immediately force them to cross sides. <laughs> so if we're playing with That's with, awesome. if we're playing with eleven people and I'm the bouncer with six people currently in my room, at any point I can say, "Hey, you, get out of my room." Oh, I like that a lot. And then the other team now has higher numbers. In in, in a single round. In like round two that lasts a couple minutes, both bouncers could just play games where they're shifting people back and forth. Huh. That's really good. You got the hostages going, and then you have the bouncer pushing people. There's a whole mix. The last thing I want to show off, because I feel like it would be a sin if I did not, oh, no. is <laughs> the zombie. I'm showing this off not because I've played with it, but because I really, really want to. <sighs> the zombie's goal is just to infect everyone. Yep. In, in its room, I believe. Yes. So the, the only thing that the zombie's worried about is making sure that it successfully uh, reveals its card to everyone in its room so that at the end of the game, all of the people in the zombie room, all of the survivors, mm -hmm. uh, are zombies. Ooh. Completely alternative win condition. That's one that I try my best not to pull out in the large group, but I do it anyway because it's just silly. Yeah. <laughs> it's just, it's, there's a lot of cards like that, though. There's, there's a card in here that makes it, there's a jester card or a joker card in here that makes it so you, you're supposed to smile the entire game. Oh yes. And that's one of the cards, that's a card that like a lot of people don't necessarily love because it's kind of just a weird, silly <laughs> card. But here's the interesting thing you can do with it. If I know that there's the, the jester card, if I know sure. there's a card in this game that make, that forces you to smile and I pull the bomber oh. or I pull the president, oh. if I'm just willing to smile, I'm hiding in the in the clown space. Yeah, I'm hiding. I'm hiding. You know, as the clown. It's a good defense mechanism. So there's a lot of gameplay here. Whatever Ooh. the case, we've now made it to the end of this video. I feel like we've generally covered. Uh, it's such a small box. Yes. There's so much going on. It's a thumbs up for me on this game, by the way. Oh yeah. Well, I mean, I, I brought you here because this is a game you go out of your way to yes. host and play at cons. Uh, if you all are interested in Two Rooms and a Boom, the best way to experience it, I would say, would be seek it out at a convention you're yes. going to be a part of. If that's not possible for you, uh, I still think it's probably worth getting yeah. if you believe you can pull together, you know, six to ten people at least. Uh, it's going to be best the highest, the higher number of people you can get. Yeah. And, you know, feel free to pull this game out with any type of gamers in your friend group because this game is easy enough to easy to understand. Just go ahead, have everyone see all the cards, explain what they all do and how the basic rules work. There's only a handful of them. Just have a blast with it with anybody. Yeah. I think if you're getting together with like a large family gathering, if you have a wedding, yeah. if you have any environment where you can get 15 people or 20 people yes. in a room together or two rooms together, uh, this is one that's worth carrying along. Yeah, go ahead. Lock them in there with a bomber. It'll be fine. <laughs> It'll work itself out. They'll figure it out. So, whatever the case, guys, I hope you've enjoyed this video. I hope we've been informative on this game that Arsenio loves and I'm beginning to love. Uh, just getting just getting introduced yes. to. Uh, if you've made it this far, like, they have to subscribe to the video at this subscribe. point. Subscribe. Right? I mean, why'd you watch this whole thing if you're not going to... Yeah. I mean, that would be ridiculous. This is a duck back there. If you do subscribe, what you'll get every week is about three new videos with gameplay, unboxings, uh, how to plays, full oh, yeah. reviews, uh, a whole mix of videos. Uh, whatever you do, remember to do the important thing, which is to get out and play some games. That's right. Thank you for joining us. We'll see you later. See you later.
you're still you're still watching, that's because you've made it to the very end of the video, where we're going to play the uh, sort of hidden, like end of rulebook hidden, two player variant yes. of Two Rooms in a Boom, which you weren't aware of. I was not aware of. I heard this. This is crazy. So uh, <laughs> so we're gonna give it we're gonna give it a quick end of video swing. <sighs> I need you to locate the president. Got it. Doctor Boom. Uh oh. And the doctor. Doctor Boom's gonna be a red card. Okay. And the doctor is going to be a blue card. Boom. So for any of you that are confused. Uh, the box says six to 30 players, but at the back of the rule book here, there is a kind of a dumb little take on two rooms and a boom, which allows you to play it with two players, three players, four players, or five players. It turns into just a negotiation and social deduction game instead of the full like sprawling no. game that this is. Uh, but it's kind of dumb and oh. it's kind of it's kind of fun. Okay. And so I wanted to give it a swing. Let's just tuck these away sure. here. Uh, this is going to be very, very simple. With the two-player variant of two rooms and a boom, player one is automatically the president. Oh, no. Lucky you. Woo. The president is going to shuffle Dr. Boom the doctor card. Player two is going to choose one card, leaving one here in the center on the table. If the president correctly chooses the doctor, he wins, and so does the doctor. Yes. No. If Dr. Boom is chosen, Dr. Boom wins, and the president and the doctor lose. The three, four, and five player variant keep that same core mechanic. They just add in another card uh, wow. to make it even more messy. So with like the five player variant, okay. one person's gonna be the president. Okay. Uh, there's going to be Dr. Boom. They're on two separate teams, but there's also gonna be the engineer. The engineer oh. wants to hand his card in secret to Dr. Boom. Dr. Boom then wants to be chosen by the president to explode. There's also going to be the doctor. The doctor wants to hand his card to the president. The president then wants to, you see, it yeah. just starts spiral, spiraling out of control. But I right now need to select a card. I'm gonna do that. And I'm going to, you know, as privately as, as I can, show the audience. And then I'm going to tell you, oh, no. I'm the doctor. I need you to pick my card. You're the doctor, you need me to pick your card. Yeah, so that we can win. Yeah? Yes. Uh, what meds do I take? <laughs> I believe you're just on a strong dose of ibuprofen and confidence. You know what? Doctor, I have to take your subscription. Yeah? You're going to take the prescription? You're going to go there. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> it's just kind of silly. Can we give it super, another round? It's super silly. Yeah, we can All go right. again. All right. So, yeah. I'm going to be the president. All right. I'm going to shuffle these up. Sure. I'll let you do a shuffle of them for as well. Sure. I'll look at my card over here, so I don't I don't know what you've taken. And uh, you're just gonna pick one up. I will turn around so that you can show the camera. All right. Mm -mm. And then you're you're probably gonna tell me that I should take your card. I'm gonna say you should take my card because you know my birthday is the day before Tuesday. Okay. We go out Tuesday night. We go out Tuesday night. Yeah. If I took your card. Why not? I took your card. Yeah. But you are you are in fact the doctor. Yeah. Because it's your medicine bottle. Say you kind of you're kind of floating around, like aggressively yeah. saying you're the doctor. The doctor. Yeah. Yeah. That didn't sound very. The card might have said Tuesday night. Uh, you should probably pick me. It might have said Tuesday night. It might have said Tuesday night. I'm playing off of if you remember what. The card I know said. it's yeah yeah well I don't. Oh no. I don't. <laughs> this is a horrible play. The designers the designers are Tuesday night games though. Uh oh. Which is why I thought you might. I'm not gonna trust you. <laughs> no, no. Ah. I try to take the easy way out, but no. So that's that's the silly. It's pure luck. Yeah, it's when pure it comes luck. Down to it, it's just. It, but it's it's kind of it's kind of fun. It definitely is kind of fun. You know, if you're just wasting the past time or something like that. Yeah. Um, it's not it's not included in the core rules. No. It's a hidden little thing in the back of the book. So I thought I'd do it as a hidden little thing in the back of my. Video. I would be interested to see the five player one though. That sounds crazy. Yeah. Yeah, because then you have more voices talking. Yep. We'll see if we can get a group together. <laughs> Thanks, guys. If you've watched this bonus part and you haven't subscribed, I mean, really? Again, there's a duck back there. Get out and play some games, guys. We'll see you next time. Thank you. <laughs>